Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPT Podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need in order to dominate on test day. So as we get started here, just a quick reminder to check out ptfinalexam.com for all of your NPTE preparation needs. We do have a practice question today. We'll be going over the neuromuscular and nervous system examination section of the exam. But before we do, just a quick reminder, you're not going to want to miss out on this. So head over to ptfinalexam.com slash podcast get on our list. We are sending out a link for a free one-day NPT preparation seminar in Chicago on June 10th. So this is an extremely limited time deal. This includes the NPT preparation course. It also includes our exams and it includes a Uh, It includes the hotel while you're there, the meals while you're there, snack. Really, it includes everything for you except for you getting yourself there. You just have to get to Chicago on June 9th and 10th. This is totally free. The only way to find out about this is to get over on our email list on ptfinalexam.com slash podcast. We will be sending out those details very shortly. You have to register directly through that link that we send out. And the registration is due by May 31st. So I wanted to make sure to get this out. This is an extremely time-limited scenario. So you can take advantage of our one-day on-site NPTE review. I think you're going to really enjoy it. There's something about being in person that just makes NPT prep even more exciting and fun. I mean, granted, it's studying. So I guess it's as fun as it, and exciting as studying can get. But it's a lot of fun. I think you'll enjoy it. Plus, One of our corporate sponsors is sponsoring this entire event. All you have to do is get yourself to Chicago. However, seating is extremely limited and will fill up very quickly. So you must fill out the registration form as quickly as possible. The only way to do that is to go over to ptfinalexam.com slash podcast, sign up ASAP so you can take advantage of that. I do hope to have these again in the future, but this is, if there was ever a limited time deal, this is it. You'll want to head over to ptfinalexam.com slash podcast and fill out the registration link as quickly as possible. So today we'll be talking through a neuromuscular and nervous system examination question. It's kind of fun. This is one of the systems that I used to enjoy the least when I was studying for it as a PT student. And I think it's just because neuro is so varied and and there's just lots of, un, un, lots of it depends. Unfortunately, with everything, there are lots of it depends answers, but especially in neuro, And that's simply because neuro is a, there's a lot of crossover. The nerves aren't, they're not distinct and concrete, much like musculoskeletal is. It all fits into nice little boxes. With neuro, it tends to be more like guidelines, I suppose, to quote our inner Jack Sparrow, more like guidelines. But in any case, today we'll be talking through an examination question related to the NPT. As per our usual, I will read to you the question, give you a moment to respond, and then we'll talk about the answer together and why there is only one correct answer here. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and talk about this question. Again, those of you who are watching the video version of this over on YouTube, it can be very helpful if you're a very visual learner. I tried to put a few things here so you could be able to see what we're talking about here. While examining a patient with a medullary lesion, which of the following deficits is most likely to be present? While examining a patient with a medullary lesion, which of the following deficits is most likely to be present? One, absent gag reflex. Two, impaired pupillary light reflex. Three, inability to abduct the eye. And four, paralysis of the face. While examining a patient with a medullary lesion, which of the following deficits is most likely to be present? Absent gag reflex. Impaired pupillary light reflex inability to abduct the eye, and paralysis of the face. All right, so this question is related to the cranial nerves, and you can see as you go through each of these that uh, option one, the gag reflex, is related to cranial nerve nine and ten. The pupillary light reflex is related to cranial nerve two and three. The inability to abduct the eye, that's cranial nerve six, and the paralysis of the face is cranial nerve seven. So we see a bunch of cranial nerves here. So the key to this question is understanding that the medullary lesion indicating that it's the medulla where the lesion is occurring. Well, we know that cranial nerves 9, 10, 11, and 12, are, they are the ones that arise from the medulla. So therefore, a medullary lesion is likely to result in deficits in cranial nerves 9, 10, 11, and 12. So when it comes to understanding cranial nerves, I've got a little chart over on the YouTube version. The way that I remember this is, it's a silly little phrase, but it's see my pons medu. 
Now you have to get a little creative with the spelling here, but see my pawns medu, CE for cranial nerve one and two, MI for cranial nerve three and four. So there's two letters in CE, two letters in MI. Pons has four letters, P-O-N-S, so five, six, seven, eight come from pons, and medu has four letters, so nine, 10, 11, 12. And again, it's much easier if you're seeing this. So again, good reason to come over to YouTube, check this out. But see my pons medu for one, two, cerebrum, three, four, midbrain, five, six, seven, eight, pons, and nine, 10, 11, 12 for the medulla. So as you consider this question then that we talked about while examining a patient with a medullary lesion, which of the following def deficits would most likely be present? So considering the cranial nerves that are innervated by the, or that arise from the medulla, we're talking about the, um, oh, I gotta make sure I remember this, a finely vested German, view to hoc. So the glossopharyngeal, the vagus, so glossopharyngeal, that's where you get the sensory on the back of the throat. The vagus nerve, that's the motor output for the gag reflex. So cranial nerve nine is the, the sensory, sensory component or sensory branch of the reflex, of the gag reflex. Cranial nerve 10, the vagus nerve, has a lot to do with the parasympathetic nervous system, but it also has a lot to do with swallowing and the gag reflex. Cranial nerve 11, that's the accessory nerve. And then cranial nerve 12, the hypoglossal, that's where you have tongue movement controlled by the hypoglossal. So therefore, anything related to any of that would be impaired if you had a medullary lesion. The pupillary light reflex, that would be impaired if you had deficits to either cranial nerve two, optic nerve, or cranial nerve three, oculomotor. The inability to abduct the eye, that's cranial nerve six, it arises from the pons. And so if you had a pontine lesion, you'd likely have, have a skew or an eye deviation. And then paralysis of the face also would be related to the pons, because that's where cranial nerve seven, which innervates the, the muscles of facial expression, that's where it arises, it rises from the pons. So Again, just a little little recap. You have to get a little creative with the spelling here, but C my pons medu, C E M I P O N S M E D U. So each of those, there's two letters in C C E, two letters in M I. So the first two, the second two, P O N S has four letters, so it has the four cranial nerves of five, six, seven, eight, and then medu has cranial nerves nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So again, a little creative. You have to take that with a grain of salt, but it's helped me. Ever since I learned that, I, I realized that, okay, I can remember where the cranial nerves originate. See my pons medu. All right, so with that, we'll bring today to a conclusion. Just a quick reminder, you're definitely going to want to check out ptfinalexam.com slash podcast. That's the only way you can register for this free one-day event. And again, I just, I can't stress enough how good of a deal this is. Our corporate sponsors, they are sponsoring the hotel stay, the meals, the parking, and the NPTE prep. All you have to do is get yourself to Chicago on June 9th through 10th. And so, yeah, you're not going to want to miss this. This is extremely limited. It will fill up. I can guarantee it's going to fill up. It's going to fill up extremely quickly. So the sooner you can get over there and register, the better. Unfortunately, there are no, there's no late registration. May 31st is the absolute deadline. I expect we'll fill up in the next, like, I don't know. By the time you're listening to this, we'll probably be halfway full <laughs> in any case. Um, you definitely don't want to miss that. And it, it is an unbelievable deal. I, I'm just pinching myself at how good of a deal this is for you. All you have to do is get yourself to Chicago on June 9th and 10th. Again, very extremely, I can't emphasize enough, limited registration. There are no late registrations. If it fills up, it fills up. There's nothing I can do to get extra here. It's just limited by venue. I mean, it's just the fire marshal that says we cannot do more than what the venue allows. And so therefore, it behooves you to sign up ASAP. All right, well, with that, we'll bring today to a conclusion. Be sure to check out ptfinalexam.com slash podcast for that registration, plus all of our other great cheat sheets. Hope to see you in the next episode. Have a fabulous day, everyone. Will Crane fist pumps all around.